The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Have you ever known terror? Have you ever come up against something that so threatened you, so horrified you, that it stopped your heart for a moment? If you never have, count yourself lucky. But don't count on your luck too much. After all, who's to say that terror may never touch you, huh? Consider Helen and Jim Crane. They never thought it would ever touch them. Our mystery drama, Blizzard of Terror, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Lois Smith. you join me now in a blizzard of terror? Not so fast, not so quick to answer yes. Are your nerves in shape for what lies ahead? Have you promised yourself a good night's sleep? A promise you want to keep? In simple brief, are you who now listen to my voice ready to cope with terror? Very well. You made the choice, not I. Come along then. Well, come on. That China will form no coalition with Russia in the foreseeable future. That's the world news. Now I have a special bulletin from the big Indian sheriff's office. Jim, turn the radio off. Sheriff Ed Ralston warns all motorists to stay off the roads on Thunder Mountain. Not only because of the blizzard, but also because the man sought for the brutal murder of the Grant family is believed to be hiding out somewhere on Jim, the mountain. Jim, please shut Slaughter, it off. All of them with a kitchen carving knife. The Grant family... Thank you, Mr. Crane. You're welcome, Mrs. Crane. We don't need to be told again and again that we're in a blizzard on Thunder Mountain. We know we are, thanks to you. I'm sorry. It's okay, skip it. Maybe it is my fault. Oh, uh, Jim! Oh. Oh. oh, that was a close one. Oh. You know, I can't see the road. All I can see is snow. What's that? What's what? There, just ahead. Back under the trees. A, a cabin? So? We better stop. Oh, no, no way. Jim. We're just managing to make it up this grade now. If we stop, we'll never get started If again. we keep going, we're sure to get stuck. Those snowdrifts out there are getting worse. Yeah, I know, We'd but... We'd be safer in that cabin. We could freeze to death. Jim, please, for once, listen to reason. <sighs> okay, okay, you win. You always do. Here? Well, you just said... But not here. The cabin's over there. If we drive in there, we will get stuck. You really are going to have to get new glasses. Can't you see the road? Oh, oh, yeah. Tire tracks. Snowed over, but tracks. Those tire tracks, they mean somebody's there. Yes. Look, look. Smoke's coming out of the chimney. Ah, oh, now. Are you glad we turned in? A swooning with the light. You're angry because I was right. When are you wrong? When are you ever wrong? Oh, you are something. You you are. You are really so... Why do we quarrel like this, fly at each other every time? Well, maybe if you weren't so darned independent. Forget it. Forget it. Okay, come on. Let's get inside. Fast. Ah. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hello? Just open the door and go in. Well, I don't like to just barge oh, Jim, in. Jim, under the circumstances. If you won't, I will. Hello? Anyone here? 
Hello? There must be somebody here. There's a fire smoldering in the fireplace. Here, look, there's a pipe in this ashtray. The tray is full of pipe ashes. Oh, here's a coffee cup, half full. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a book open on the table. Young psychology of the unconscious. Whoever owns this place must be a brain. Hello? Anyone here? Hello? Helen, Helen, don't do that. You've got no right to go nosing around. Bedroom. Nobody in it. Uh, must be the kitchen behind that door. H Helen. He yes? Let's just sit down. And just wait for whoever owns this place to come back, huh? I just want... You've got no right, Helen. Now, the owner of this place must be the kind of person who wouldn't like people nosing around. Oh, now, I'm really. telling you, just look at it. This isn't just a cabin, it's a... It's a kind of lodge. Here, that wall lined with books. There, a, a hi-fi. Stacks of records, all classical. And those paintings on the walls. Helen, please. I want a cup of coffee, and if this door leads to the kitchen... She just won't listen. Just won't ever listen. Well, what are you standing there for? Now that you've opened the door, go on in. Oh. Good Lord. What is it? Oh. Jim. Oh, Jim. Helen, what is it? The what? kitchen. Oh. The kitchen. Oh. Here. Helen, here, here. You better sit down. You look like you're going to faint. Now, you just sit there. I'll have a look. Now, we better get out of here. My God, oh, Jim. Blood, blood all over. A and the axe. Did you see the axe? Yeah, that's the first thing I saw. Come on. Blizzard. We can't... We can't stay go. here. There must have been some hell of a fight in that kitchen, and I'm not waiting for the winner to come back. Oh, you don't suppose... <gasps> what? The murderer... The, the murderer they're looking for, that man who s slaughtered the Grant family, they said he was holed up somewhere on the mountain. Helen, I don't know, and we're not going to hang around to find out. Now, come on, let's get out of here. Oh. Oh. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, we, we, uh, I, I'm uh, Jim Crane. This is my, my wife, Helen. We, uh, we got caught in the blizzard, and, and we saw your cabin, and, uh, and, and we just, uh, we just came in. We, we, we were over at Big Mountain for a skiing weekend, and uh, we, we started back too late, thanks to my husband. Oh. Yeah, I guess it was my fault. You see, I don't ski. My wife does, but I don't. And, uh, well, I, I got into this poker game, and I was winning, and I uh, couldn't quit when I was ahead. You know how it is? You don't have to make any excuses to me, friend. Maybe to her, but not to me. Well, I, I, was, I was just explaining. Like ice in here. Better get that fire going again. Uh, uh, you, you needn't bother on our, our account. I'm not. Well, wh what I meant was we were just leaving. Not in that blizzard, you're not, Mrs. Crane. It, it's Miss Morgan, if you don't mind. I thought you said she's your wife. Well, she, uh, she keeps her maiden name. You kidding? No, uh... You marry a doll and give her your name and she won't use it? What's the matter, Mrs., uh, excuse me, Ms. Morgan, you said, eh? What's the matter, your husband's name isn't good enough for you? It isn't that. Then what is it? I uh, prefer to keep my own name, that's all. A lot of women do these days. Yeah, they call it women's lib. Women's what? Lib. For liberation. You know, they keep their names, their independence, their jobs, everything. Everything, eh? <laughs> that's too bad. You were my wife, doll. You wouldn't keep your name or your job or, uh, anything. Uh, what do you do besides letting her get away with all this? Uh, engineer. I'm an engineer. You drive a train? Oh, no, 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 no. Not that kind of engineer. Hydraulic engineer. Water power. Oh. Cigarette? Oh, uh, no, thanks. I don't smoke. You? I don't smoke either. And I thought you... Huh? Nothing. You thought I was? Well, I... Uh, I noticed the pipe in the ashtray, so... Oh. Oh, well, uh... Yes, yes, I, uh... I do smoke a pipe now and then. Uh, cigarettes, too. You, uh... You haven't told us your name. 
Jake. Jake what? Jake's enough. We need more wood. I'll get it. Let's get out of here. No, we can't. Well, we've got to. He doesn't own this place. He doesn't live here. And from the looks of him, oh, good Lord, what a bruiser. He, he could be the murderer the sheriff's looking for. The blood on his clothes, it's all over his park. Helen, we can't be sure it's blood. What else could it be? And, and what about the cigarettes? There's not one cigarette in that ashtray. There's nothing but pipe ashes. Yeah, that's true, all right. And he's stupid. Yeah, but totally uninformed. He couldn't be the man who reads these books, listens to that music. He never heard of women's lib. He thought you drove a train. Helen. Helen, we can't leave. We could die out there. We can die in here. And I have a feeling we will if we don't get... I'll hold this for a while. And enough wood in the shed to keep us warm through the night. Though with a little lady like this to keep you warm... You wouldn't have to worry too much, would you? Well, don't look so upset, Jimmy boy, would you? I wouldn't. But then I'd see to that. Not a bad idea, come to think of it. <laughs> How about a drink, sweetie? Or uh, don't you do that either? I, I, I could use a drink, yes. You, Jim? Oh, uh, thanks, yes. Uh, what do you do, Jake? Right now, nothing. Well, I mean, when you do something. Let's see, we got uh, scotch, bourbon, vodka. What'll it be? Helen? Scotch. Huh? I said scotch. No, uh, please? Uh, excuse me, uh, please. Jimmy boy? Uh, the same, uh, please. One thing you gotta say for men. They got better manners than women. Well, come on, come on. Pull up to the fire here. Let's all get uh, cozy. That okay with you, Helen? It'll certainly be warmer by the fire. That isn't what I said. I know what you said. What did I say? Here you are. Thank you. Showing better manners. Good. Thanks. That's <sighs> better. Easy chair, warm fire, drink. That's much better. Uh, ni nice, uh, nice place you've got here. It's all right. Uh, you must do a lot of reading, all those books. I read some, yes. Mm -hmm. I see you like classical music, too. Hmm. Who are your favorites? Composers, I mean. Oh, uh... Beethoven, maybe? Yes, yes, I, I like Beethoven. Oh, me too. I'm especially fond of his Tenth Symphony. Oh, yes. Yes, I I go for that, too. Well, I don't know about you two, but I'm getting hungry. Could use some supper. How about it? Yeah, I could eat. You, sweetie? Oh, I suppose. Ye yes. Good. But first, we'll have to clean up the kitchen. It's a real bloody mess out there, and I mean bloody. What do you mean you mean bloody? Just said there's blood all over. All over me, too. See? Oh. Yeah, yes. Yeah. How, uh... What, what, what happened? I didn't want to kill him. I had to. I surprised him out there in the kitchen, and... He came for me. It was an axe, and it was the handiest thing, and I... Used that. I sank it into his skull. Deep. I couldn't help thinking of the Grant family. The Grant? Yes, you haven't heard about that. Whole family down in the valley. Slaughtered. Blood all over. I got there in the kitchen. Well, we better get to it. You mean me? A lot to clean up. I can't do it by myself. Jim will help you. No. You will. I, I, I'd rather not. I didn't ask you whether you'd rather or wouldn't. I'm telling you. I'll give you two minutes to get out in this kitchen with me and get to work. There is no Beethoven tense. Oh, Jim. What have we got ourselves into? Helen. Better humor him. 
Come on now. You better go on out into that kitchen. I, I, I'm scared. I, I just can't be in that kitchen. Not, not alone with, with him. You saw the way he looks at me. The, the things he says. Oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll protect you. You. Well, how about it, doll face? Are you coming? Yes. Yes. I'm coming. Helen and Jim feel the first stirrings of terror. But worse, much worse, lies ahead for them. Suppose now that you, not Jim and Helen Crane, but you had sought shelter from the blizzard in that forsaken mountain cabin. You had met this strange and quite obviously murderous man who calls himself Jake. Suppose you, not Helen, are helping him, against your will, to clean up the shambles in the kitchen. The bloody shambles. Well, that's it, I guess. The axe needs to be washed. There's blood all over it. Well, go on, wash it. I, I, I can't touch it. And not as liberated, uh, wasn't that the word, as you thought? I don't see what that's got to do with it. I kind of got the impression you felt you could do anything a man could do. <laughs> all right, I'll wash the axe. You start making supper. Well, what are you standing there for? Get busy. I don't know where anything is. Lots well, of can stuff in that closet, and there's a can over on the wall. Think you know how to use it? I'll try. Spunky, aren't you? Spunky. You know there was a killing in this kitchen this afternoon, and I was the one used this axe. You know that, but you got the nerve to stand up to me. Maybe too much nerve. There's beans and spaghetti, stew. And that's about it. What do you want? You decide. I figure you're good at deciding things. And that's what's wrong between you and your hubby. How do you know there's something wrong? No sweat. Five minutes with the two of you and anybody could see you're too pushy. And him, he's... He's too much the other way. Yep, like I said, you're too spunky. Somebody ought to take a little of it out of you. Get your hands off me. Oh, come on now. Now let me go. Mm. Oh, stop it. Stop. stop it. Hey, what's going on here? Uh, oh. What's going on? Well, you might say I was uh, starting to do what you should do, Jimmy boy. Well, don't try that again. You do. And, and you won't do any more than you're doing right now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Jim, Jim, please. It's all right now. No harm done. I'm, 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 I'm not hurt or anything. What's the big deal, Jimmy boy? Little kiss between friends. What's to get psyched up about? Come on, chum. Let's you and me have a friendly drink while Helen gets supper ready. No, I don't want to. Come on. Ah, uh, you uh, know how to use that can opener, sweetie? I'll manage. That's my girl. Scotch, right? Yeah. Oh, I see you tried to use a phone. <laughs> Don't look so surprised. You put it back the wrong way around. The phone's dead. I could have told you that. The wires are down, I guess. No. I cut the wires. You, you cut... I see. Well, <laughs> you drink, Jimmy boy. Cheers. Oh, and by the way, in case you've got any other ideas about getting help, those guns over the fireplace aren't loaded. And neither is that revolver on the mantel. Jake. Yeah? I'll, uh, I'll make a deal with you. What gives you the idea that you're in any position to make a deal? I'm not, I'm not, but you've got aces back to back, I know that, but I'm still in the game, Jake. You're a good poker player. You're bluffing, but I'd never be able to tell it in your face. Are you going to listen? All ears. 
Let us go, Helen and me. Let us go, and we won't say a thing, not a thing, to anybody. About what? What? You know. I don't know. Look, I don't want to spell it out. You got no choice. I hold aces back to back, like you said. All right. We, we, uh... My, my wife and I, we have a pretty good idea who you are. You you know that, or I wouldn't be telling you. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what you're thinking, once these two leave here, they'll contact the sheriff and give them a lead on me. Well, all I want to say is, just give us a break and we won't, we won't say a word to anybody. Thanks. I appreciate that. And in return, you just let us go. Who's holding you? Well, you know what I mean. We, we, we can't go now, not with that blizzard out there. I mean, tomorrow or the next day, when, whenever the plow comes through and clears the road, I, I mean, I want you to let us live. What for? Answer me that, Jimmy boy. What for? Well, that's a crazy question. Yeah? Let me tell you something. Tell me. You in love with your wife? You can't answer that, huh? She in love with you. Can't answer that either, huh? Can you? How long you been married? You can answer that. Three years. What happened, Jimmy? What happened between the times three years ago you two couldn't wait to get married out there and now when you can't wait to get divorced? You are thinking about divorce, aren't you? Well, we... Uh, we don't get along, that's for sure, but... But what? You're at each other's throats day in and day out, right? Nothing but fights, arguments, frustrations on both sides. From the minute you get up till you go to bed, right? Am I right? Yeah, you're right. And you want to live? For what? Well, you keep hoping things will change. They won't. Unless you make them change. Very few ever do. They keep hoping right into the grave, hoping. Like the Grants. Why, uh... Why did you kill the Grants? They killed themselves. They were dead long before they were put out of their misery. Like you and her. I'll make a deal with you, Jimmy. I'm listening. You give me a good reason why you should go on living. And it's a deal. We want to. No. You just don't want to die. <laughs> now. That wasn't a bad meal, sweetie. You're real talented with a can opener. Thank you. Yeah. Storm's getting worse. Yeah, we're really snowed in now. Drifts above the windowsills. Better build this fire up, and then I guess we'll hit the sack. And where do you want to sleep, sweetie? <laughs> Come on now, you shouldn't have any trouble making up your mind. Oh, I haven't. I'll sleep with my husband, as usual. As usual. Now, what kind of a crack is that? Now, now, cool it, Jimmy boy. Well, I won't have my wife insulted. I don't care how big you are, Jake, or how tough or cold-blooded. I won't oh, have you insulted. Oh, Jim, now stop it. This is no time for gallantry. You're no match for him. He'd kill you. Besides, you took me the wrong way. All I meant was... Well, come on now, be honest. How long has it been since you two did sleep together as husband and wife? That's no business of yours. <laughs> long time, huh? Well, the minute I laid eyes on you, the way you acted toward each other, looked at each other, the way you talked, anybody could see you hated each other. We, we don't hate each other. You love each other? You see, that's what I mean. You two. You don't hate, you don't love. You don't nothing. And you ask me, that's a nutty way to live. So how about it, sweetie? How about what? There's a nice big double bed in that bedroom, and it's going to be a cold night. And me, I sure appreciate it. I warn you, Jake. Oh, Jim. I'll sleep out here on the couch. Come here, sweetie. What? 
Uh oh. Let old Jake see if he can change your oh, mind. Oh, God, hey, hey, now. Get what your are you hands doing? off her, me. Oh, 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 you dirty. Jim. Why, you, you shut the little treat. Hit me, would you? Oh. 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 I guess I will hold you for a while, Jimmy boy. Now you, dog. Oh, no. You can kill me if you want to. You could torture me for hours, but I would never, never... Never. Uh, suit yourself. No, I think about it. What would I want with you? Oh. When Jimmy Boy comes to, tell him not to get any ideas in the night about escaping or overpowering me. He hasn't a chance. Jim. <sighs> Jim? Oh, I'll be okay. He sure packs some mean wallop. You <sighs> shouldn't have even thought of standing up to him. Some things a man will take and some things he won't. And manhandling his wife is one of them. Jim, can we get out? Do you think? Would there be any way? No, no. We're slowed in. Even if we could get to the car, we wouldn't be able to drive it a foot in those drifts. What about telephoning for help? No, the phone's dead. He cut the wires. Oh. But don't you worry. Don't you worry, Helen. There's one thing he overlooked. What? That revolver on the mantelpiece. This. It's loaded? Not yet, but it's going to be... He made a big point about those guns over the mantel and this revolver having no bullets in them. I knew that without being told those guns were the first thing I went for when you two were in the kitchen. But if they're unloaded... Well, I nosed around. I couldn't find any ammunition for the guns on the wall, but I found these in that drawer. Do they fit? Looks as if they ought to. We'll soon find out. They do. They fit. Yeah, thank heavens. What do we do now? We'll wait till morning. But we're safe now, Helen. Safe. Thanks to you, darling. You know, you haven't called me that in... I don't know when. Uh, oh, uh, I... Oh. Jim, there's something I forgot to mention. I kind of figure you must have found the bullets for that revolver in the desk drawer. You did, didn't you? What of it? Uh, don't bother loading that gun. It doesn't work. The trigger's broken. Night. Helpless once again, Jim and Helen can only stare at each other as fear touches them with icy fingers. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Terror's icy fingers grip Helen and Jim Crane as they face all but certain death at the hands of Jake. Curious, though, isn't it? Even strange that their fear, shared in common, brings them closer to each other than ever before in the three years of their marriage. Strange. Curious. Jim. Oh. I didn't know you were awake. I've hardly slept. I'm sorry. I, uh, I've done the best I could with this fire through the night to keep the room warm. I know. I know. I watched you get up out of that chair again and again. Thank you, Jim. What? You did it mostly for me. For my comfort. Thank you. Oh, nonsense. I, uh, I need a little warmth, too, you know. You don't get much, do you? From me. Could be I don't rate much. I think you do. Then why do you withhold it? I only just found out. Found out? It wasn't the cold that kept me awake through the night. It was thinking about Jake oh. and us. Yeah, well, we'll manage a way out of this. I don't know how, but we will. I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about something he said last night. He said, we don't hate each other, we don't love, we don't nothing. And then he said, you ask me, that's a nutty way to live. Well, it is, isn't it? 
if what he said was true about us, but it isn't. It is. Not for me. I did a lot of thinking, too. I, uh... I love you, Ellen. I always have. It's just that... Y yes? I don't know. It seems I can't reach you anymore. Something happened to us along the way, and I can't figure out what it is. I think I can. Tell me. I don't know. I think maybe it's it's just the times we live in. I I mean, oh well. Take women's lib. I don't see anything wrong with women's lib. The fact is, I I'm all for it if if it doesn't go too far. It did with me. I think. Oh, I don't know. I I, I do. I wanted to be. I I still want to be my own person, myself, me. The last thing I wanted was to be dependent on anyone, and I guess, especially on you. But last night, oh, Jim, I was scared. And when you fought for me, when you, oh, well, you just went for him like a raging animal, Jim, and you did it for me. I know you wouldn't have done it for yourself, or maybe for anyone, but you did it for me. Oh, Jim, I, I, I needed you. I really did need you. Well, maybe the truth is... The simple truth is that we need each other. I, I don't mean just you and me, but everybody. I mean, we're all in the same boat, aren't we? Same world. We are dependent on each other, so... Why do we fight it? I'm not fighting it anymore. I made up my mind to that during the night. Jim. Hmm? I love you. You are a wonderful husband. O only I just never gave you the chance to be. Oh, Helen, sweetheart. Oh, I do love you. Oh, Jim, I do. Oh, I do. Oh, dearest. Well, well, well. well. Oh. Look what's going on oh. here. When did you two scrappers become lovebirds? <laughs> never mind, never mind. The fire in these building up. Get some wood, Jim. It's out back in the shed. Okay. So, you think you've fallen in love with your husband all over again, eh? You were listening. You overheard. Don't laugh myself sick. I don't see anything funny about it. You wouldn't. You believe it. So is he. Fact is, the two of you are in the same boat, and no, you better row together or else. Or else what? <laughs> You'll find out, sweetie. What will you take to let us go? Kind of putting the cart before the horse, aren't you? Go where? The blizzard has stopped. But those drifts out there must be six, eight feet high. They must plow that road. They have to keep it open. A plow is sure to come through, if not today, tomorrow. Could be. Well, then. Well, then what? Don't kill us. L let us go. Why should I? I'll give you anything you want. I'll do anything you want. How do you know what I want? What makes you so sure you can supply it? You've made that plain enough. Jake, I, I, I beg you, let us live. At least, let Jim live. And I'll do anything. Anything. Oh, oh Jim! Oh, what happened? Jim. Oh, I was bringing an armful of wood and I stepped on a log. Oh, twisted my ankle. Here, yeah, let me give you a hand. Uh, Just uh, lean on me. Now, take it easy. Jim, oh. Jim, dear. Oh, easy now, easy. Uh, yeah, sit right there. Oh. Let him get that shoe off. Let oh. him get it off himself. He's no cripple. I, you I, get out in the kitchen and scare up some breakfast. You heard me. See if you can stand on it. Stand? Try it. Oh, oh, I, I can. I'm helpless. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Real helpless. Hey, you make a good cup of coffee, though. Thank you. 
I'll get another cold compress for your ankle, Jim. He's all right. I said... I said he's okay. Let him worry about his ankle. You and me have some unfinished business. What is this? Helen, what is this? It, it's the only way. What only way? What are you talking about? Jim, I made a deal with him. A deal? I said I'd, I'd do anything if he'd let us go. Are you out of your mind? He's going to kill us. Now, you know that. Now, you're crazy. He'll get what he wants and then he'll kill us. No. Yes. No, because I'm going to kill him with this kitchen knife. All I want is, is to get close enough to him. No, no. And then no, I... no, you can't do that. It isn't in you to do that. It's got to be. There isn't any other way. What's keeping you? I... I'm coming. And leave the knife, doll. <laughs> These petitions are awful thin. You ought to know that by now. Put the knife down, I said. Stay where you are, Helen. She made a deal. And she's gone through with it. Over my dead body. No, you fool. Over your live body. Over my life? He said he'd spare you. Spare me? He said us. She lied. She made the bargain to save you. Helen. Helen, you, you, you I would... I love you. I love you, Jim. I told you that. I love you. And I love you, Helen, a lot too much to let you go through with anything like this. What you figure you can do about it, huh? You can't even stand that on that bad ankle, you can. Oh, yes, I can. Uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh, Jimmy oh. boy, not you. Now, Dal. No, no. I can't. I... I can't go through with it. Oh, yes, you can. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Oh, please, I can't. Stop I it, can't. Jimmy. I... Stop it. Oh. Stop it. Jim. You. How did you? I don't know. I don't know, Helen. I, I somehow grabbed the poker and, and, and made it across the floor and hit him with it. I, I don't know how I did it. I've got to sit down and get off this. Oh, here, ankle. here. Oh, lean uh, on me. All right, now. Easy, easy. Yeah, thanks. Oh. Uh, better have a look at him, Helen. See if he's breathing. I... I may have killed him. He's breathing. His head's bleeding. Where you hit him. All right, get something to tie him up with. See if there's some rope around. Uh -huh. And snap it up. Oh. He's, he's coming to Oh, yes. yes. Oh. It's the phone. He said he cut the wires. He couldn't have. It was a bluff. Hello? Sheriff? It's the sheriff in Big Indian. Who? Professor Moran. Uh, no. Th there is a man here. I, I'm afraid he's hurt. Oh. Um, oh. Me? My name's Helen Crane. My husband and I got caught in last night's blizzard, and, and we managed to get to this cabin, and we found... Well, there was blood all over the kitchen, and an axe... Helen, look out. Jake, oh. it, 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 it's all right. Oh, all right. The poker. Oh. Helen, the poker. Hit him again. No. Yes. No, you've got it all wrong. All wrong. Helen, hit him. Shut up. Give me that phone. Oh. Oh. Hello. Hello, hello, Ed. Yes, it, yes, it's Jake. No, it, it's okay. Every, everything's okay. No, 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 not, I'm not worried at all. I knew you'd check as soon as they... they got the service back on. Huh? Oh. Oh, man. Bobcat. Yeah, Bobcat. Surprised him in the kitchen. Killed him with a wood axe. Handiest thing. Yeah, I guess so. Prowling for food, sure. Oh... Well, a nice young couple. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm very much alive. I'll explain when I see you. The plow. When? Good. No, 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 we're okay. Plenty of wood, plenty of food. Huh. Thanks, Ed. So long. You... Professor Moran? Yes. Why? I don't get it. We thought you were the killer they're looking for. Yes, I know. 
Why didn't you tell us who you were? Why, why didn't you explain about the blood in the kitchen? Well, more important, why did you act the way you did? You acted the part of the killer. Yes. Why did I act the part? Well, you were guinea pigs, I'm afraid. Guinea pigs? Yes, I'm head of the Department of Psychology at City University. I sized you two up the minute I saw you. Your marriage was headed for the rocks, and like most couples, you didn't know it. No, I... Uh... I guess we didn't. Like any other young marrieds in this day and age, you'd lost contact with each other. We're going separate ways. Well, I set out to bring you back together, and... As I said before, people in the same boat have to pull together. All I did was put you both in the same boat by making you face a common danger. A danger that never existed. Well, I'm hanged. You carried things pretty far... Professor Moran. Uh, too far, my dear. Much too far. <sighs> uh, you'll find aspirin in the medicine cabinet. Uh, bring me a couple, would you? Mm. On second thought, uh, bring the bottle. And so terror turns to surprise and relief. Pretty shrewd fellow, Professor Moran, wouldn't you say? I mean... Realizing that Jim and Helen were headed for divorce, that took keen insight into human nature. But then, he was, after all, a trained psychologist. I'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Marriage is two people in the same boat. A cliché, of course. But the very core of every cliché is truth. All is not gold that glitters. A stitch in time saves nine, and so on. I couldn't help thinking that all humanity is in the same boat. And what an infinitely better and happier world it would be if we all learned to pull together. Our cast included Lois Smith, Larry Haynes, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. XI Stereo 96, Seattle. CBS News. There was no mincing of words Monday night in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Just one, Watergate, led to a stunning election defeat. This is Steve Young reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Democrat Robert Vanderveer defeated Republican Robert Vanderlaan for the congressional seat vacated by Gerald Ford when he became vice president. This, though the district is heavily Republican, and Ford had been its representative for 25 years. Van Der Veen called his campaign a referendum on Watergate, and in an interview a few minutes ago with CBS News, he stuck to that theme. From uh, the day that I announced that I would be a candidate, I have suggested that the president should resign. Nothing has happened in the intervening two months to change my mind, and I think that's what the uh, whole election was all about, the people had a clear chance to express themselves uh, on how they feel about the Nixon administration, and they uh, spoke loud and clear. Van Der Veen's Republican opponent had run with the endorsement of Vice President Ford, who told the Grand Rapids Press, I'm very disappointed in the results. I'm sure, said the Vice President, it's a reflection of the uncertain economic conditions in Michigan particularly, and in the country generally. 
I am confident that as the economy improves, there will be greater support for Republican candidates. But the Michigan State Republican chairman did not look to the economy, said William McLaughlin, Watergate killed us. San Francisco publisher Randolph Hearst is looking for a group to distribute $2 million worth of food to California's poor. He announced that he and the Hearst Foundation have come up with the money as a first step in negotiating the release of his daughter, Patricia. The Symbionese Liberation Army says it kidnapped Patricia two Mondays ago from her Berkeley apartment and will consider the food plan a show of goodwill. One of those acting as intermediary in San Francisco between the Hearst family and the SLA is the leader of the American Indian movement, Dennis Banks, a key figure during the occupation last year of Wounded Knee. As a result, there's been a delay in Banks' trial in St. Paul. Rich Holter of CBS affiliate WCCO reports. The announcement of at least a one-day recess in the Wounded Knee trial came from defense attorney Ken Tilson, who says District Court Judge Fred Nickel made the decision after several conversations with members of the Hearst family. Judge Nickel indicated that he later spoke to uh, Mr. Hearst, to Mrs. Hearst, and to uh, Patty Hearst's sister, and as a result of those conversations, the judge was convinced that the Hearst family felt that Dennis's bank's presence was uh, important and critical in the negotiations, and critical possibly to saving the life of Patty Hearst. Tilson says the judge will make decisions about any additional delays on a day-to-day -day basis. As for Banks' role in the negotiations, Tilson said he thinks the AIM leader has come up with some suggestions that someone must be listening to. Rich Holzer for CBS News, St. Paul. Back in a minute. It's all a matter of justice. I'm Mike Wallace, CBS News. And this Saturday and Sunday, the 23rd and 24th of February, I'm Anchorman for our next big weekend special, A Hearing for American Justice. It's about people and the law, about the whole system. From life in a police patrol car to the problems of prison and parole. From juvenile crime to juvenile punishment. From plea bargaining to inequities in sentencing. The high cost of justice. Listen to A Hearing for American Justice. 30 special reports all about how the law affects you. Join our nationwide jury as CBS News presents a hearing for American justice this weekend, the 23rd and 24th, on the CBS radio network. It'll be some of the most important listening you do this year. President Nixon's one-time campaign manager, John Mitchell, and former Commerce Secretary Maury Stans go on trial Tuesday morning in New York in connection with a secret $200,000 contribution to the Nixon re-election campaign. The president returned to the White House Monday after making a speech in Huntsville, Alabama, and stopping in Indianapolis to pick up daughter Julie Eisenhower, where she underwent surgery last Thursday. Predictions all around are for a close vote when the Senate decides Tuesday whether to approve the emergency energy control bill. Washington State Senator Henry Jackson says the oil industry has been putting the strong arm on senators to vote no because the bill contains price rollback provisions. I'm Steve Young, CBS News. 